So one of the biggest mistakes I see guys making when they're trying to style a bomber jacket is they're wearing the wrong size. The reality is that most guys are buying a size that's too large for them. Now, having gone through the fitting process of getting a bomber jacket, I understand why. When most guys are buying a winter jacket, they expect to layer with it. So they want enough room underneath that they could wear a bulky sweater. Unfortunately, this rule of thumb doesn't work when you're buying a bomber because of the elastic on the arm and on the waist area. You see, bomber jackets are an interesting mix of a loose fit in the body and then a closer fit on the arms and on the waist. And the reason goes back to its military history. You see, the elastic around the waist and around the wrist was meant to be able to keep the cold out and the warm in, while the excess room in the torso area was for the equipment a pilot would often carry. This could include a sidearm, breathing equipment, or maps or important information that the pilot would need if he had to ditch the airplane quick. In fact, when it came to layering, usually a pilot was wearing only his flight suit underneath. So how to get the perfect fit? Pay attention to the shoulders. Don't wear bulky clothing underneath and go ahead and simply put the jacket on and look how it fits you in the shoulder points. When you zip it up around the waist, it should be snug, but in the chest, in the torso area, you should have some room. Gents, this is key. Fit is king. You've got to get it right. Now, for you clothing historians out there, I know there is a difference between a bomber jacket and a flight jacket. A bomber jacket is a variation of a flight jacket. Flight jackets include everything from A1 jackets to A2 jackets, B3 jackets, B6 jackets, and even G1s. But in today's video, we're going to focus in on the A2 bomber jacket, that leather jacket that has been a style icon for almost a hundred years. Yes, gentlemen, this jacket was designed in the 1930s for the Army Air Corps, and they wanted the jacket jacket that pilots could fly at higher altitudes at, the current A1 jacket just wasn't good enough, wasn't meeting the standards they need, and so the A2 jacket was created. And that takes me to the next mistake that guys make when it comes to styling a bomber jacket is they don't even have one in their wardrobe. They think, you know, that's a fad, that's a fashion flash in the pan. Guys, almost a hundred years, this jacket has been around. Yes, it has its ups and downs, but if you invest in a good bomber jacket, one that again, fits you, looks good, is classic in design, you can bet that this thing is still going to be fashionable 50 years from now. Now, if you're in the market for a bomber jacket, a lot of options out there and some of them can cost you thousands of dollars, especially if you're looking old school vintage. You also want to be careful about the styling. You're going to find some bomber jackets out there that look good in pictures, but when you get them in your hands, nah, they're just poor quality. They just are not what you expected. So where to find an affordable bomber jacket that looks good and is styled classically? Guys, check out today's sponsor, Thursday Boots. Now, gents, for years, I've been talking about Thursday Boots. I wear their boots. I love their boots, but maybe you don't know. They've got a whole line of jackets. Now, this bomber jacket you can see right here, I had sent to me and I absolutely love it. It looks good. It's warm. They're not bulky. And that's what I love about this jacket is that you can wear this with a t-shirt. You can wear this with a Henley. You just simply style this how you want with a dress shirt, throw this on top, and all of a sudden, you've got a more rugged, stylish look. The zipper is smooth, easily goes up and down, and I really like the elastic. You can tell that they actually use a good material. This is going to last a long time. I love the shearling collar. This thing right here, just it's warm and it just adds a whole bit of texture and style to the overall look. They've got a really nice layout on the interior with the leather lining. The lines are clean. The stitching is on point. And the total number of pockets, by the way, is five. They've got the inside pocket. They've got the two flat pockets on the outside, classic in design. And you've got also two hand warming pockets. And when it comes to colors and options, gents, go check them out. They've got these flight jackets in Anejo, black coffee, and black. And the leather the jacket's made from is a full grain leather that's going to look better over time. And gents, if you're in the market for other types of jackets, check out their motorcycle jackets. They come in a wide variety of colors and check out their denim trucker jackets. And of course, if you're looking for boots, they're going to work perfect with your bomber jacket. Check out all the selection that Thursday has. You guys know I love the President Collection. I really like their loggers. They're just a bit heavier, rugged. I just really like the style. And their Chelsea's for me are a go-to. I love the slip-on convenience and just a really nice style, especially if you pick them up in one of those weatherproof suede. All that being said, gents, on their jackets, they do have limited quantities. So, to get the color you want and the size you want, go over to the website. I'm putting the link down in the description with the best deal you're going to get on the web. Seriously, gents, use that link. Go over to Thursday Boots. 
an awesome company. I've been in New York. I've met the owners. I know these guys. And for years, we've worked with Thursday Boots because I love what they bring to the table. Affordable, great quality pieces, whether they're jackets, whether they're boots, whether they're shoes, that are going to make your wardrobe look amazing. Really quick, a little bit of history note. The Blood Shit and the A2 Bomber Jacket. They used to go hand in hand. In case you're not familiar with Blood Shits, these were a notice that were carried by aviators whenever they were flying over an area that they didn't speak the language. And it basically asked that the person who engaged with the aviator to take him to safety. And it promised a reward. Now, the Blood Shits were first pioneered by the British in World War One, But in World War II, the Blood Shits were made famous by the Flying Tigers. And the Flying Tigers, in case you're not familiar, these were American pilots that went over to China, fought for the Chinese against the Japanese before the United States entered the war. With these blood shits, they would often read in Chinese, I am an American. My plane is destroyed. I cannot speak your language. I am the enemy of the Japanese. Please give me food and take me to the nearest allied military post. You will be rewarded. Yeah, so if you're ever in a thrift store and you find bomber jacket with a blood shit in it, guys, grab it. That is a high value item. Now, gents, if you're enjoying today's video, you like a bit of history mixed in with a classic menswear item, do me a favor and smash the like button. It lets the YouTube gods know that this video is worth watching. All right, Jen, so the next mistake a lot of guys make when they're trying to style a bomber jacket is they wear the wrong type of trousers. So there are many options, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. You may prefer chinos, you want to go with your jeans, maybe probably not shorts. But I am going to say a lot of guys for some reason seem to gear toward, oh, I'm going to wear some cargo pants. Don't do that. Okay, we've already got the big pocket right here. You also don't want to wear skinny jeans, and you don't want to wear oversized jeans. It's going to be more straight fit jeans, maybe something with a bit of trim. You could probably wear a looser fit if that is your style, but don't go with baggy. Again, one of the extremes here, it just doesn't work with this particular jacket style. Perhaps the best bit of advice I can give you right here, and this applies actually to wearing any type of outfit, is to look at yourself in a full length mirror straight on. This is going to enable you to see just any mixed matched proportions. And that's what we're watching for. Because again, with the bomber jacket, we're going to have a little bit of excess material around the midsection, but you're going to be tighter in and around the waist and the wrist. And this can cause the wrong type of trousers, especially again, if they're a loose or a really close fit, it can throw the whole look off. So, you want to avoid those. Again, straight fit jeans, maybe a bit of a trim fit or, you know, like that. Not, not again, not skinny, but slim is fine. Next up, let's talk about formality. Bomber jackets are casual, even in military circles they are casual, especially if you've got patches on the jacket. Just a little bit of history. On the left-hand side, you would usually have, are you in the United States Air Corps? Historically, are you in the Navy? That would be over here. And then over on the right, you would have the patches of the squadron. Now, the Air Force, uh, the Chair Force, you guys would actually change it out depending on what squadron you're at. You know, I'm making fun. I love the Air Force, air power. The Navy, on the other hand, they would actually stack the patches depending on what squadron you're with. Because every couple of years, usually you're switching squadron. So, on a Navy flyer, you would often see a series of patches going down. But in general, gents, anything you wear a bomber jacket with is going to be a casual outfit. So, you're wearing it with a dress shirt, you've got some gray flannels, you like the look and the combination, that's fine. But it is going to bring down the formality level of the outfit. The next mistake when buying a bomber jacket is a lot of guys buy a cheap one and they try to pass it off. Here's the thing. Everyone can tell that that is a fake leather. It's a cheap leather. It just, yeah, doesn't look good. Now, historically, the A2 jacket was made from a variety of different leathers because it was civilian contracted through various contractors over the years. Initially, they used tanned horsehide. Cowhide, of course, was used, but we've also seen goatskin used. In fact, in 1988, the United States Air Force reissued the A2 jacket in goatskin and it was only available to a select few. In a nutshell, you had to have completed your mission qualifications. And unfortunately, they weren't allowed to throw a bunch of patches on it and stuff and make it look really cool. I'm not going to say one leather is better than the other. In general, goatskin is going to be softer, more supple, but it's not going to be as tough. I really like a nice cowhide. Horse is going to be much harder and also thicker. But in any case, make sure that it's a leather that you can condition and over time is going to actually pick up a bit of pantina and is going to look good 50 years from now if you take care of it. The next styling mistake I see is not choosing the right color. And this is relatively easy. Go with the jacket color that's already in your wardrobe. You want it to work with everything you've got. Most of the jackets you're going to see out there are going to be variations of brown. 
dark, medium. And again, going back to these are manufactured over the years by various manufacturers and they had different colors. And when you're working with leather, every hide is going to be slightly different, but there's nothing wrong with going with a black bomber jacket. Is it traditional? No. But if all the jackets in your wardrobe are black, your shoes are black, you really like that color, then wear it. Because when you choose the right color, you're going to be able to wear it with confidence because you actually know how to pull that color off. Now, I talked about this earlier, but I want to make sure I give it its own point, And that is don't over layer with a bomber jacket. Historically, people just wore a flight suit underneath. I like wearing it with a Henley, with a t-shirt, maybe with a long sleeve, you know, t-shirt. Have something underneath that is relatively light because that's when I think a bomber jacket looks really well. And these are going to be thick. They're going to be warm. They come in different styles. But understand this isn't really like a negative 30 degree winter jacket. For that, wear a parka. So, to be specific, yeah, in general, I consider bomber jackets lightweight jackets. And there's nothing wrong with having lightweight jackets in your wardrobe, especially those those of you guys out in California, maybe down in Texas. Yes, I know occasionally in Texas it gets below freezing and you guys aren't ready for it. Come on, I grew up in Midland. I get it, but uh, no, this type of jacket is going to look great, especially just simply when you can throw it on, look good, feel good. Oh, and if you spend a lot of time commuting, this is a great jacket as well because of the elastic. It keeps the jacket out of the way. When you get into the vehicle, you get out of the vehicle. I actually like, you know, be able to show off the watch. Yeah, it's just a good overall style and fit. Now, this next mistake, not everyone is going to agree with me here, but I like to wear a bomber jacket unzipped, which goes against most jackets when I talk about when you stand a sports jacket, you button it up when you stand. A lot of my other jackets, I like to actually zip them up a bit when I'm walking around, but I find with the design of the bomber jacket, it looks best when it is just left open. That being said, you want to make sure that you can zip it up in inclement weather if you do have to, you know, keep yourself warm and you're wearing the jacket for practical purposes. But when it comes to looking good in the jacket, if you're going to be walking in, meeting up with some ladies, guys, I really like it when you just leave it open. It is a casual, just creates a timeless look. On top of that, I really do like it when you go with solids. You don't try to overdo it with prints and colors. This style is in of itself enough, I think, to be subtle and to grab a bit of attention. I don't think you need to do it with shirts that have too much attention, have too much color. Go with simple dark colors. Yeah, it just is a really clean, timeless look. So, what video to watch next? How about another classic aviator item, the scarf, and how to style it correctly? So many guys don't even try to style the scarf. Guys, come on, scarves, aviators, and many other people throughout history have loved the scarf. Yeah, check it out in this video, history with how to wear this and look good.